Welcome back, Death Toll Racing, episode 7 of the Twin Turbo Crown Vic build. This is basically starting off where, where we left off on the last episode, uh, just finishing up our intake uh, lines. Um, I did get that 45 degree boot off the throttle body. That does uh, it, That is going to help make everything a little bit cleaner and easier to uh, change it, check the oil and that type of stuff when, once we're in there. Um, it's a little cleaner as well, other than the boot is miscolored four up in the engine compartment all the boots down below are, are blue and now up here they're black and blue so um i did order a black 45 and we'll get that here a little bit later on in the episode um i pointed out just a little bit ago that make sure when again I, I think i mentioned this before but anytime you cut one of those aluminum fittings uh, you do need to flare it um so that the boot doesn't pop off under boost um what i just pointed to there was mass airflow sensor um that uh, those are directional, so check the flow of your sensor uh, before you install that, or if you put it in backwards, it won't work. And then also, you need to make sure that you're putting it in the right size diameter boot, or your tune is going to be way off. Um, our tune is going to be way off anyway. I'm doing this twin turbo stuff, so it doesn't. It's not as uh, relevant, but uh, in most situations, you want to try to keep those roughly in the same diameter tubing. So now I just took out the uh, old air cleaner housing. We don't need that anymore, and I was kind of getting an eyeball on um, maybe routing if we end up having to run a new intercooler on this um, of getting the piping up through that direction into the core support um, I was just kind of making notes so that I, I can kind of have that going around in the back of my head um, here we are running wires for the oil pump so I'm going to wire that in to the fuse panel but we're going to just have have a uh relay tripped by an ignition source so we'll just tap into one in the fuse panel by using a little jumper um mini fuse jumper uh so that anytime that fuse turns on or, or power is sourced to that fuse or which is ignition it, i'm actually using fuse 22 in this box which is an, a police accessory box uh or a fuse um that it it goes uh, apparently it panels some relays behind the few behind the uh, glove box uh, from what i read um it's irrelevant to me i'm just using it as a power source and i double checked that it comes on anytime you turn the key on um so that that pump will be running anytime the ignition's on i i had to clearance some of the little reinforcements in the lid uh, with a dremel tool so that the box will shut properly and then make a little access for that wire to pop out um, and then it's just tripping the coil side of the relay and then we will have another fuse uh, directly to the positive battery terminal um, that will supply power to that pump. So, all right, finish that up. And then we're going to jump right into doing fuel pump stuff. Okay, I'm just going to focus mainly on converting the pump inside the tank, not removal of the tank. Okay. Okay, so we need to make this Aeromotive 11540 E85 compatible fuel pump fit uh, in the factory spot. So um, odds are they're probably going to be pretty similar. Oops. Um, I do want to warn you, and this, this may not be the case with this fuel pump, but I would never trust the fuel lines that they give you. This, I think, I believe this is actually a good fuel line though. Um, a lot of aftermarket fuel pump companies, uh, even name brand ones like Phytech, for I know for example, will give you fuel line in their kit that's not compatible with being submersed in fuel. Um, extremely frustrating uh, when the fuel, fuel line dissolves. I believe this is actually good though because it's all one piece. Um, it's all one piece where if you were to look at a normal fuel line, uh, they have basically two layers. You have an inner layer and an outer layer. Um, and what happens is the outer layer dissolves in the fuel and then all the nylon wrapping comes out, everything swells up and it explodes. Um, so this appears to be all one piece, uh, molded all as one. So I believe this is probably good fuel line that they gave you in this Aeromotive kit. But um, I was looking at reviews online and quite a few aftermarket companies, name brand ones, were giving you uh, bogus fuel line with their, with their stuff. So. Okay, so it's not going to be too terribly hard to retrofit this in there. The only drawback I can see already is that it has those unreusable crimp style crimps on this fuel line here. Um, and otherwise, 
it looks like it's going to just kind of fit right in there. So let's get this one off of here. Let's see if we got lucky. Nope. All right. You know what's crazy? It's actually the same plug. <laughs> we don't have to do any plug stuff. So I, I, I'm going to remove that seal, the, the seal that was on the factory plug, and put the put the new seal on. Um, just so we're starting off with a new seal. Plus the old one was pretty swollen from sitting in fuel for 10 years or 12 years, I guess now. Mm -hmm. What I did there was just cut the top off of the of the hose clamp, and then I'm just going to open that clamp up so that we can try to get that out. I, I would like to reuse that hose that's on there, um, and just crimp our new one to it, our new pump to it. Woohoo! Okay, before I stick this guy on there, okay, I, I see one problem already, and that is that that is too narrow for this guy. So we're going to have to open that up a little bit, and I have an idea for that. We don't want to use sparks, obviously. The depth is perfect, so we just need to find a replacement clamp. I would love to use another one of those uh, crimp, crimp clamps, but I don't know if I have one that small. So we may have to just use an EFI one. Good, so now we just have to address that. One. And that's just you. And here I'm going to use a stainless steel zip tie um, to put that to hold the return hose or whatever that hose is there down. Um, it had a normal nylon zip tie before, so I'm sure that would work fine again. So they had the boot offset to the front, so we'll just do the same. Converted.
So we'll try out this new pump, make sure our connection and stuff is good by draining the rest of the fuel. I, did, I didn't get all the fuel out because the sump is in the front and I got it leaning so far backwards. So, we know the wiring works the way we had it, so it should work again. Alright guys, uh, I got the fuel tank back in. Uh, it was a big pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie. I, I was yelling at the engineer who designed it. And then I started thinking, well, I think someone might have actually swapped my studs out with short ones. Uh, the studs on these straps are really short. Um, and then, unless I'm missing something, that makes it extremely hard to get the tank back in. I couldn't get those nuts on there. Um, I was having hell. I, obviously, I got them on there. But it, I was having to work at it way harder than I should have had to. Um, normally on fuel tank straps, they're really long studs so that, you know, you can get the nut started and then, and then cinch the thing up. But on, in this say, case, just like a normal stud. Uh, and yeah, it, I mean, the, the strap was tight by the time I got the nut started. I, <laughs> that's how tight it is. Um, so that was, that was really hard. I, in fact, I actually pulled the tank down thinking I must've had something stuck up there or, you, you know, but I didn't, it was just, it's, that's just how tight it was. Um, I don't know. It is what it is. If you guys have one of those cars, if you wouldn't mind looking to see if you have long studs back there, <laughs> that, would, that would be great. No, um, I'm just kind of curious if that's the way they always are. Or if that's, uh, I just got lucky or, or something. Um, okay. So what do we have left to do on this thing? We got uh, all the lines to run to our waste gates and the blow off valve uh, for control lines. And then we have fuel filter that we need to change and I'm waiting on the fittings for the adapters. Um, so I, I ordered some adapters and hopefully they'll work out so that basically it'll be a plug and play to swap in that big uh, fuel filter right here. I think I'm gonna take this bracket off and we're going to mount it a little bit tighter to the frame uh, so that we have more room for our intake uh, or our filter. I do need to put hose clamps on there. I need to not forget to do that. Um, and let's see, what else do we have to do on this thing? Oh, we got to put in our gauge, our boost gauge. Uh, I want, I kind of want to hide it. I don't really want, you know, I, I really don't want anyone to know this thing has these turbos in it unless they start really looking at it. I don't want it to be really obvious. It's going to be obvious when it's running. I mean, there, there's just no way around that. But but uh, when it's just sitting there, uh, I, I would like it to look kind of stock. And I don't know why that is. Um, another thing I did, um, I cut these studs off. The only position I could put these, I can't have those down. This is the lowest part of the tube. Um, and I can't have these underneath or they hang down even more. They don't fit on the other side. So I had to put them over here and then the stud hangs down. Well, I decided that these are now one-time use uh, clamps, so I cut them off. So if I ever have to take this apart, basically it's gonna come apart. I'll never be able to get it back together. Kind of like my fuel tank straps. Um, so anyway, I, I did that to those. Those are one-time use. So really, in reality, I should, I'll probably throw a couple of those in the car uh, just in case I were to drag that on the ground and that all comes apart and I need to put it back together on the side of the road. Uh, I won't be able to get it back together with those clamps. So I'll have to use Duke clamps. So. Um, Anyway, I was just going to point that out, but I, I really didn't have a choice but, but to do it that way uh, on it. So let's see. I, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching. We will see you again soon. Just running lines, fuel filter, boost gauge, start it, make sure it works. I got to put oil and stuff in it. Hopefully I don't forget. <laughs> um, and that's about it. So anyway, we'll see you again. I don't even know what day of the week it is. We'll see you again next time.